Hey, what's going on, guys? It's your boy Marcus, aka Fatty Matheson. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, this is live from the Shed podcast, episode eight. I am here with Tom Garland. What's uh, up? What's up? What's up, Tom? Uh, Tom is amazing. I think uh, Tom's pretty dope. I'm going to hype you up a little bit because that's what I do. Well, but, hey, uh, before you do that, I just <laughs> thanks for having me. I appreciate you having me in my car. Yeah, so thanks, for, thanks for the ride. <laughs> we're in my car right now. Yeah, we're not in the shed this time. We're that's in... That's funny. But I did that. That was me. I, now I'm punking on you. I'm like, come eat with me. And then, and then I'm like, let's just do it in my car. And then I'm like, ha ha. Uh, gotcha. You do it in a car. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, it's cool. Uh, Tom's a really great comic. He's been doing this, what, 10 years in February? 10 years in uh, this coming February, yep. yeah. Yeah, man, that's um, yeah. that's when they say you're, you know, you're funny or whatever, but I think you're funny. You know already. what, that's actually, they say that's when they're going to pay you, and then they just don't. They yeah, that's when they, yeah, that's they're, when like, they're like, ten hey, years I'll pay you. I yeah, got your money in there. Yeah, yeah. Ten years. We'll see you in two thousand twenty. Yeah, see you then. I got your money. Yeah. And then you're like, hey, you get the money. You're like, ah, I was ah, fucking with you. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, you got five more years, you know. Yeah, five more years. <laughs> and everybody knows it's a fifteen year comedy. It's a fifteen year you're not funny until you're not funny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So uh how long have you been in Vegas now? Um I've been in Vegas. I keep probably exaggerating it because it you know it feels time in vegas like drags but oh yeah drags. i have been in vegas um since one month when was the shooting the shooting that's terrible to, october uh, put it but october well, but of, 1st of 2017 of 2017 right? yeah so i came september 1st 2017 okay. was my first day in las vegas so just now two years yeah so two years two i keep years. saying three it okay. feels like three. Sometimes I do two. that with my comedy. I'm like, I started in 2016. You know, like, it's one of those weird things. Sometimes it's, with comedy, if yeah. you're talking, like, sometimes it's better just not to say. Right. Because sometimes, like, if you say, like, oh, I've been doing it, like, three years, and then yeah. people are like, this guy's going to blow. Or yeah. And then they yeah, discredit yeah, yeah, yeah. you, and you're like, well, dude, just give me a shot. Right. On the, on the other side, if you're like, I've been doing it 13 years, like, this guy's been doing it 13 years. Jesus Christ, what's yeah. he fucking Yeah, what is he? Now? Yeah. Right. <laughs> so even, like, 10 years, I'm like, I don't even know how to feel well, that's what they say but I'm like but I didn't do much you know so it's like I yeah don't know, you it's know, this so. weird thing that just happens just, sometimes it's just not like saying how long you've been in comedy what I found is sometimes it's like saying your age you know and it's right. like and you're like auditioning you're for like a part. parking somebody or well, something you're like you know, you're auditioning like, for a part and oh, you're yeah. just like you're not like i'm not the first thing i don't advertise is my age right i'm not like hey i'm 31 right you know just in right. case you want to know i'm right i guess i you know, but you got no, that make, makes sense. Yeah, so you know, you always want to be. Like, oh, I'm 25. What do you, yeah, yeah. You know, like, <laughs> how, old do I, how yeah. old do I? How old do I? Everybody's look? <laughs> bio always says he's a young, up and coming comic. It's like yeah. he's young. He's 45, Yo, he's years, 45 years old. Yeah, he's like, 55. He's got a roommate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he lives with three young, other comics. And, yeah, yeah, young, up and coming. You're like you, young. <laughs> so, how'd you get your start in comedy? Um, fuck you for asking. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I usually go. No, I'm like, how long have you been doing it? All right, so I just Does started. everybody say fuck you? Is no, no. Fuck? They're like, uh, when, when I went I to a bike. Tom Garland, how did he get into comedy? He said, no, fuck you. Yeah, he's like, fuck you. Um, That's funny. Guy, he's a champion. Yeah. Right now, there's a cab turning around. Well, actually, that was a pretty good move. I got to give it to him. No. Yeah. Um, I got my start in, co- like, when you're asking, like, uh, what was my first open mic? Yeah, like how did it go? Like for me, it was like Very I was first night. Yeah, it was pretty much like, hey, I'm gonna try this comedy thing, and I started going to mics, and then I finally I went did up and three minutes my first time at Penguins Comedy Club. Okay. In Cedar Rapids, it was at a, uh, it was like a side rental room at a Clarion Hotel. Okay. And, uh, and they called yeah. it a comedy club? And they, well, it was a weekend club. It's a okay. club. I mean, I'll give it to him. Uh, okay. But uh, he, he's got a weekend. And uh, it used to be in downtown in my hometown. And at this point, there was a flood in my hometown. And it flooded out the club. And so they moved it to this, like, hotel thing. And so it was out. I started at the one that was, like, out at the... People sometimes, if you he- read people they've written about this club, they'll say like, "Oh, it's a that shitty basement or whatever." Uh-huh. It's like I didn't yeah. ever play in that basement. I played in the, in the I, I played in the one that was out refurbished. By, like, the, 
Yeah, I played at like a refurbished one, and then I played. They like later went to another bar, and I I played at the one at the bar, and it was kind of my first lesson in like that was a lesson even in like clubs move. They were, yeah, you know, like yeah, what the business oh, what, side of things. Biz, that that yeah. gets into the business, yeah. But that's you know like you know. So yeah. I didn't I didn't know how anything worked when I started. I was from you know Iowa. So, yeah, uh, my first mic was dive bar. Your first mic was dive bar. Oh yeah. Hmm. Oh yeah, Alex just Alex was hosting. Okay. And, uh, so this is not that long ago, right? It was 2016. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was cool. three years. You know, cool. Bragging so about my years. time again. That's three years. <laughs> yeah. 2016. I'm like, three years. I just told, like, literally, like, 30 people that just walked. We were just leaving a show. Like, all those people that were talking to me, I was just, three years, three years, three years, three years. Three years. <laughs> Fucking three years. liar. Bro. Three years. Fucking lying to people. Yeah. All right. So. So ten years, did you did you think this is where you were going to be ten years into it, or what? Did you think this is where I got to ask? Flip that on you real quick. Okay. Did you think this is where you'd be uh, th- this far into comedy? Like three years your, in. Like what were your expectations of comedy? I didn't know uh, what to think. Like because yeah, where, where I had are no you idea. From? I'm sorry. That we're I'm from here. Time. I'm You're from, from here. here. Yeah. Born uh, and raised. Yeah, born and raised. Born and raised. Henderson. So like, yeah, you have a totally probably for me a totally different perspective. Because you're how old? Uh, 30. 30. So, like, yeah. So, you have a totally different perspective, probably, on stand-up, like, growing up. Like, you're bef- pre-you doing stand-up. Before yeah. you ever step on stage. Yeah. I bet your idea and mine of entertainment was vastly totally different. Totally different. Do you oh, yeah. have anybody in your family that was, like, and that's connected at all? Or like, no. Has, did no. you know anybody that did no. anything? Uh, my aunt told me I was funny, and she's like, why don't you do comedy? And I was like, well, I don't... I'm, I've never been the funny guy. I've never been the funniest guy in the but, room. But I mean, did you know like any business? I didn't no. know. No. Well, what, okay. What the mics were. And what, I didn't so know any of this shit. I managed bands for a while, and I was right, doing. I was booking tours okay. and running a little indie record label. So I yeah, understood. So you had an idea. I understood like music business, but like. Well, that's pretty good. That's what I ended up yeah, actually later on. I end up getting more music business side of things towards the very end. Yeah, but I found that comedy is like totally different. Yes, you I know. mean, well, it is, except if you're me and then you book comedy to mostly rock venues. Then, yeah, uh, yeah, we've talked about that. I wanted to talk about that. Yeah, but yeah, uh, but yeah, I didn't, I didn't really, I, you know, at first it was just like a, hey, this is fun to do, you know? God, I'm funny, aren't I? Like, right, it's just, see, like, I'm not even funny in real life. Like, well, I haven't said anything funny. I think this thing opened with me, I made some stupid smart-ass remark, <laughs> and then... It wasn't even good. It was what but was it? I was like, "You're a shit talker." I was like, "You're in the car, you're car, car guy." And this thing's called life from the shit, and you're thing. not even in a shit. Yeah, yeah, I did that joke. Yeah. And then since then, how long have you been on? Uh, eight minutes. Eight minutes. Eight minutes. And I got one in. Yeah, you got one in. This is my real. You know, this is me. If I'm I think not that's, just like I think, it up. I think that's how it is. You know, you go and you see. Like, I, I bet Tom Segura I, I is do. not funny all I the time. I feel like there's people that are funny when they're off, though. I don't yeah. know. Like it's a weird thing. I don't. I don't try to be like that. I just. I've noticed it recently that I'm like every second. I'm like, uh, yeah. is this shit? Did you, you know, have? Like, and, did and, you have that buddy who was like the funniest guy? And you were like, oh, that guy. You know, that yeah, guy. Yeah, I, I just mean yo, like totally. Like my friends' friends were way funnier. I don't oh know yeah. You, but they were way oh, funnier yeah. than me. Like yeah. Um, my non comic my normals friends. Yeah. Uh, the normies. Yeah. Well, I usually use the term normals or civilians civilians to, yeah. and but a lot of times just normals uh and yeah. that comes from chicago but yeah. uh to describe you know non-comics yeah or whatever. i have buddies that are so much funnier than me and they'll just like i have stage fright i'll never do it it's like right. all right like that's cool i mean even if you didn't have stage fright there it comes a point with it yeah there's so, so much to it so yeah i guess like just I don't know what we were supposed to, what I, I was supposed to be answering here, but whatever the, um, is this where you saw your, you, you thought you were going to oh be yeah. 10 years in? Um, is this the trajectory uh, you thought you would be taking? Or? I thought, uh, certain stuff, we, it, it's a reassessing thing. Like I didn't understand, like I said, I had a very vague, uh, business sense of it okay. in the very beginning. Um, I would say that I, got lucky uh the first time I came out to Vegas in okay. the sense that I got to play at the Riviera with Steve-O and Tom Green nice so it was cool that was your and, first uh, that first was my time first in Vegas? time in Vegas uh, okay. as a comedian I had been in Vegas 
um, for a weekend before that. Okay. Like, I had done one weekend just to party with a friend of mine. Okay. And we flew out here on a spring break. And uh, and, and then this, the second time I came out, I, I played the Riv uh, with those dudes. That's and, crazy. Uh, yeah, like a, a year or something uh, after that, I was like... It was 2013, so I don't know however old that makes me. I think I was 24, 23. Um, four years in? Yeah, like three, three, four years in, something like that. Nice. Um, so, yeah, again, like, I don't know, three, three years. Three years. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, my my concept of time is all messed up. But, it, yeah. anyways, the, uh, so that that was, like, a cool, uh, a cool thing. But back then, there was still Riviera Comedy Club. Okay. And Riviera Comedy Club was, like, real old school. Like, everybody was in, everybody was in suits. Yeah. Everybody is dressed like I am right now. Yeah. Not the way... Everybody's right. dressed there and looking at me like I'm weird. Right. I was dressed like everybody now. I right. was like you were dressed now, like I was dressed in rags right. and a hat. Yeah. And I went into Riviera Comedy Club and uh, the booker there, uh, Charlene, uh, she was the manager or something. But she did not like me. She's a nice person, by the way, but she right. did not like me because of how I dressed. And right. And whatever. And I brought attitude and she didn't like that. It's And... You know, you're this cocky um, kid. You're this cocky kid, yeah. yeah. And I, at the time, I was, I was like, this club, like, what's her deal? And then uh, later, I, it just, you know, uh, I beat it into my own head that, like, no, that's that's class, and there needs to be more of that. And stand up comedy would be in a better place if there's more class in it. Okay. And instead, it's it's like it's gone like trashy, like it's this like, you know, it's like porn now basically um where it used to be like to be a headliner is like a, a big thing yeah. now everybody says they're a headliner you know, right or whatever so i don't even know what that means anymore um but uh but back you know th- so that's where um you know th- some of that influence came from i guess i get so off topic dude i don't even know what it's all good this this isn't one of those like you know I know no one just, listens to this. Yeah, no one, no one fucking listens. <laughs> like, like you're gonna I'm be, you're gonna be like my most popular episode <laughs> so far. Around. You know. Um, so what was it like touring around with uh, the Jackass guys? Um, it was, uh, it was cool. Um, so it started out that I met Steve O. Uh, at this place called the First Avenue Club in Iowa City, okay. and I actually got to open for him a. a couple times and the second time that he came to town um he gave me his email address and uh and I held on to that thing like it was oh yeah fucking gold, gold. you know yep. what I mean like and I was like this is my contact yeah this and is then, right this yeah. is my thing I thought and um and so uh the first thing he was like oh I like um I want you to write for me maybe you know, he was real vague about it and then I wrote him some stuff and then he never like liked it I I don't know like I just I, like even at the time like I probably wasn't ready to be like writing for somebody but um I think what he liked at the time that he saw me I think I remember him saying was that I would talk about really dirty stuff I used to do this more I don't do it anymore but I, I would talk about really dirty stuff and I would dodge it like right at the last second okay I would be, you know I was that dude where I'd be like whoa I'm talking about her cash you know something yeah. like yeah. Oh, not did that just I come out like, of my mouth yeah, lots like, of like yeah. double entendres yeah, yeah, and like yeah. stuff like that and like okay. misdirections and stuff so okay. I did a lot of that so he liked first. your style like I would go well I think that's what he was trying to do is like be I'm dirty and crass but I'm okay for TV there you, you know, go. like, okay. I'm, you know, there's like, two sides of me. Like, I'm club, yeah. I, I always say, like, club clean. Like, you want to be yeah. dirty enough to play in the club, in a sense. Right. Like, so, like, this guy's got attitude. Right. But you don't want to be, like, too fuck, dirty. Fuck, 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 right, fuck. And right. just like, dude, okay, like, sneak a joke in there. And, yeah. like, that's one thing if I pay to go see Cat Williams, then right. I, I'm going to, I know, you know what, what Cat you're Williams getting. is going to do. Yeah. But if you just, like, if I'm on that hilarious seven, you just spring some shit like that on me, it's like, ooh. Okay, and, like, you know, Cat's a genius. I'm not saying, like, you drop Cat Williams and it's fucking uh, incredible. But I just mean some guy trying to be Cat Williams and right. stand up for two years. You know, like, right. uh, three years, three years. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah. Cool. So, uh, yeah. And again, there, I had another aneurysm. That's the pen. That's yeah. Sm- uh-huh. smoke. Then they, I'm smoking the pen and I'm reading on the thing and it's like, if vape's gonna kill you. And I'm like, vape's gonna kill me. And I just keep vaping. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like blowing like, vape, looking at the article. Yeah, you you're know, like, this I'm is it. Like, nah. nah. Well, it's killed like what, 14 people? Yeah. You know, it's 7 billion people. It's killed 14. Right. You know, they want to stop it. You know. Yeah. 
it's dangerous. You know, somebody with money is telling yeah, people circus, to stop. Circus circus kills more people. Yeah, circus circus is <laughs> bed <laughs> like bugs kill more people. Like than just, <laughs> yeah, like overdoses and just. Yeah, their uh, their PR team must be amazing. Well, I think they're just trying to keep things quiet. <laughs> I just I don't think they care. They don't anymore. say much. Yeah, they don't say much out probably. Yeah. All right, so you're, you know, a couple years in, you're meeting Steve-O. You're, oh, yeah, so that's what you're you're opening I had to people. divert us for that. God, what a good joke about fucking Circus Circus. That's not hack at all. The fuck no. What am I talking about? But, um, <laughs> see, this is stand-up when you're not, like, prepared. Uh, like, yeah. I, so I, no, I like to be prepared. Right. You know, like, I was, even though I look like I I like, sprung this on you. I was like, hey, we're going to podcast. You're like, no, all right, man. No, cool. but it's more like the podcast. <laughs> no, you didn't, not that way at all. I don't feel like that. Because sometimes okay. you've, you probably heard me, like, go off on, like, when they spring weird shows on me and shit. But, like, oh, yeah. Uh, like, the other night, that strange little thing. Yeah. But, uh, but when we did, you know, like, the, this is. Oh, more, I loved like, how you handled that, This by is the way. just, like, You're like, all right, flow, cool. You know? So I'm just, yeah. I, I can't prepare as well. But yeah. the, yeah, oh, it, um, uh, uh, You're like, all right, me. that's. Have you done it like this before? So and they're for like, context, no. <laughs> two, two people came up on stage, and and I think if somebody's just like rushing the stage, more or less, if they're like, like yeah, like, um, the, you know, you just let them come up. So I guess that gets back to jackass with dipshit fans. So, yeah, having to deal with all that. Yeah, so small and, towns. And I mean, shit. so yeah. eventually, I write some stuff for Steve-O He doesn't care. Okay. Right? And but then, you're uh, still emailing him and still t- chatting yeah. and. And so. Uh, I, I'll tell the truth on this. I've kind of fibbed about this for years, but um, I, I don't this. care anymore. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah. So then he wants me to, or I want to. I want to do something with him, and you know, and I'm kind of hitting walls with it. And uh, so uh, I was like writing this stuff, and he's like, oh, "Okay, I don't really know if I'm going to use any of that." And I'm like, huh, "Well." Like, what if I did, like, an open mic and filmed it and, like, showed you me doing it as you or something? Like, I don't fucking know how to sell you these bits. And then, then I'm like, could we, if we could do a phone call, I could probably just, like, teach you the some stuff, you know, that you could use. Was he and brand he, new to he, comedy at this point? Um, He had been doing comedy, I guess, for, like, I don't remember. I don't want to say because I don't want to okay. just say wrong. But, I, but he's still pretty good. Maybe six it. years. Oh, okay. You know, and I'm at, like, what, three or four. Yeah, okay. But, you know, I'm, I've been thrudging through shit and mm-hmm. he's been handed the but yeah. he's also he's a, doing the he's celebrity, a celebrity and yeah. he's a circus clown and whatever yeah. I find out later on I, I learn a hell of a lot from him yeah. but anyways so um, he it, whatever it gets to the point where like nothing comes out of the the emails and, and the shit, interaction the yeah. interaction and so finally I see Steve-O post that uh, he's gonna be in Las Vegas with Tom Green so oh. I have his email and I'm just like, huh, okay. I send him an email and I go, hey, Steve, I saw that you're going to be in Las Vegas. Funny thing, I'm going to be in Las Vegas those same days. I'm going out there with my friend to party and I'd love to come see your show and have a beer. Just like he doesn't have a beer. So like have a tea or whatever the fuck he does. Yeah. And then I said, uh, but, you know, it'd be cool as fuck if I could open for you guys. If yeah. you don't have an opener, but you probably do. So whatever. So, uh. You know, uh, send the email, and that's like to me the hail mary of all hail. You're Marys. like, come on, this has got to work. He hits right. me back. You got an ironclad five minutes. <laughs> no, did he really? Yep. And I figured my thought process was, if this motherfucker says no, cool. No, I don't fucking go to Vegas. Or but I do. Maybe I just fucking do. Right. Second. If he says, yeah, I got the tickets, fuck, I got to fly out there, but it's Steve-O, and I want to get in with this fucking guy anyways, and, right. and whatever, the plane tickets from Cedar Rapids to Las Vegas are like fucking $100 a legion, yeah. whatever. So I'll tell me there. how you felt so, when you got that, like, so, do you have an ironclad five minutes? Like, I, yeah. Were you insulted? Were well, you... no, so I was like, whew, and I was like, fuck yeah. And then uh, I got I got it locked down. I waited until I got the good. And then he was like, yeah, you're good to go. And then so I was like, cool, I guess I can. F-. And then I, I think I even maybe asked, like, can I post about it? And then he was like, yeah, whatever, sure. Yeah, and so sure, I was man. like, I'll be opening for Tom Green at the Riviera on whatever date in Stevo. And somebody wrote on my Facebook, holy shit, Tom, that's a big deal, or something like that. Yeah. And that's when it finally set into me what I did. Yeah. And I was like, I'm You gonna, made that happen. I, but then I'm like, fuck, 
me, I have to do the show now. Right. And I'm not that good. Oh. I've only been doing stand up for like three or four years. Right. Right? Right. And so I'm like, You're like, I, fuck, I got what in I way do? too this over is my like, head. Now I'm like yeah, too yeah. over my head. Like, okay. this is like, yeah. fuck. You know, like, this is the starlight th- in the, the, just like building it up. So I fly out, I get here, and uh, I, b- I bump into Steve O in the hotel. He's like, oh, is this where you and your friends are staying? And I'm like, oh, my friends are here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're here somewhere. And, uh, and he's like, okay, cool. Well, meet me at my room tonight and we'll go to the show. And then so I'm like, okay, cool. We'll go to the show. And I get to his room and, you know, he's being real nice to me. And he takes me down and uh, we get there and there's a fucking, like, lot. First of all, like, walking around with him, like, people are like, Steve out, oh, Steve out. Oh, yeah. And there's, like, a line of people all of a sudden at the thing. And then... Uh, you know the, the producers come in and they're like you know we're, we're sold out you know obviously but i'm like oh they're sold out and they're like yeah they're, these are the back then these are like like straight i shouldn't say that they're like i shouldn't use the word mafia but they were italian guys that worked uh, produce shows at the riviera okay right and so yeah. they were they, they were something else yeah and uh but the the, the dude was like He's like, yeah, it's still that's fucking Las Vegas. Are you fucking crazy? Like, it's opening night. Yeah, it's like press night, too, you know? Everybody's here. And I'm like, yeah, everybody. And he's like, yeah, the k tops out there. You know, uh, fucking Chris Angel's here. Uh, oh. Three Six Mafia's in the front. And they're all in the front fucking, like, two rows, right? Because oh, it's like fuck. some big press night thing. Right. And then I'm like, holy fuck. Like, David Copper, you know, they're all here, man. You know? And I'm like, what the fuck? Oh, my God. Fuck Copperfield's out there. But you know what I'm right, saying. Right. Like, they're all, like, a bunch of famous people are in there yeah uh, Flavor Flav and like all these people right. like, oh, so this fuck. is at this, this point this then, is the biggest St- show St- Steve-O and Tom Green are more famous back then too oh yeah you have to keep in mind Tom this is Green 2013. show Jack well, they're kind of both on the sk- skirts of it but it just okay. like both like just kind of ended their big yeah. run of you know, they have enough Steve-O, of a draw. Steve is now like sober, you yeah. know, when this is going on, and okay. Tom Green's like divorced to Drew Barrymore and all those, okay. but they're big, you but know, they're, they're still they're yeah. bigger than they are now, right. you know, for fucking sure, right? And uh, and this again, this is a big ass theater, it's fucking packed, and uh, Shit. and I'm I they're like, yo, do, you know, do are you five. getting more and more nervous? And uh, well, finally, the dude says to me right before the curtain opens, he goes, Are you nervous? And I said, I do this every night. Yeah. And uh, and then he just looked at me like I was a dipshit. <laughs> yeah, he's like, yeah. And he's like, you've never fucking done this shit. But he just goes, hey. And then he goes, hey, from Cedar Rapids, Iowa, Tommy Garland. And he fucking brings me on stage. He was nice enough to bring me up. Yeah. And then I'm supposed to bring Steve up. Okay. And then the show's going to roll from there. I got five. Okay. And I do a joke or two. <laughs> Whatever. I'm doing okay. And some guy heckles me. And I can't remember what the interaction was. I think something where I somehow I can't remember what I said to him, but um, the guy and me are still friends to this day. Okay. Uh, really good friends, and uh, which is stupid, but he's a nice yeah. guy. And, Buddies uh, with a heckler. Right. With the guy that heckled me on like this <laughs> on the fucking first nice thing, biggest on this show thing. of yeah. your life. Whatever it, what we yeah. want to call this thing. Yeah. And. Uh, and I, I fucking nail him, dude. Okay. I nail him. Nice. And they fucking love me. Okay. And I come off, I'm like, whoa! Like, I do this all the time. You know, I'm yeah. like, whoa! And I come out, and I'm just like, yeah, it's a good crowd out there. And the guy's like, yeah, you were good. So you're like, you're going to do all of them? And I was like, what? He's like, you're going to do all the shows here? Like, yeah. He's yeah. like, good. And like, yeah, work some money out with Steve, and you're in. Nice. And I'm like, Okay. All right. And so Steve's like, yeah, I'll pay you to run my merch and fuck. <laughs> you know, all right. I don't think he was counting on me being there. He's like, ah, oh, great. That's fucking good. Right. Yeah, he's like, I and, got a uh, wacky. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, and so that, then I, I ended up playing, uh, we, we went in and out a couple times. I played 12 shows at the Riviera. We were the nice. last comedy show to play that theater before they fucking blew it up. Okay. And, uh, that got under my veins as, like I can do cool stuff. Yes. Like cool stuff can happen for me, okay. and I can do it. That was the first thing where you're it like, was a oh, taste. Dude. It was a taste. There was. Were you uh, addicted at that point? Well, yeah, but I yeah. mean, I remember, I remember when we left. I said to Steve, like. Hey, do you think there's more shit? And he was like, "Fuck no!" Like, you got lucky as fuck. Yeah. And then he was like, "But I'll see you there, man." He like, you know, gave me a hug and stuff. And uh, in his car were these pink boxing gloves signed by Kim Kardashian. Okay. And I was like, "You have boxing gloves in your car signed by 
took her. He's like, yeah, yeah, no, it's a fucking benefit thing I'm going to. And like, whatever. But it was like, like, the level of celebrity that they were on at the time to be around that is like, right. that's what you're like. I right. was from Iowa. I was that's never going to be exposed. Well, I was never going to be exposed to what that's actually like, right. too. So it was a nice window in. There was things I saw that I liked about it, and there was okay. things I saw that I was like, I don't like that, and right. I wouldn't want to live that way, okay. and I wouldn't want people to think of me that way, and other things that they they had to deal with, yeah. and and just who they are and whatever. Yeah. And I just you know I, I was a, becoming an adult and was like. Um, you know, seeing that sort of shit, and it, it was just influential as fuck on me. It got Vegas under my veins, though, and then it made me, it gave me a goal to, like, work on, you know, and then, and all that, and, and two, to know, like, to know where I'm at, like, to come out here, and there was, there was nights that I didn't do so hot, and, uh, there was, a, uh, you know, like I said, the Riviera Comedy Club, like, laughed in my goddamn face, which I don't, you know, g good for them, like, th that was the right move at the time, I wish that would happen more now, because again, too, I came later to appreciate uh, the level of uh, caliber that they were bringing to the table there, they did actually give me a guest spot, because uh, the dude that ran the casino at the time liked me, and he told her to give me a guest spot, Okay. and, uh, and I did the world's worst guest spot there Ooh. to to really drive home her fucking oh, opinion of me I, right I, I she was already like i don't like, like tom oh, i don't like this fucking guy yeah oh, he cool. dresses like i'm shit. sure if i met her now i know the right people that are so cool with her that i could come back and say you know she's a nice enough person i'm sure she'd listen to me and hear my side of it but right. probably at the time it was pretty hard for her to wrap her mind around this what whole was, thing what was going on but um yeah, it's just, like, Vegas was a little different then, like, you know, uh, like, it changes, and yeah. uh, at least, too, and then... The that, players like, change, the, and... I, too, like, had this romantic view of Vegas as, like, I was playing the show, but I was always kind of coming out, really, as a half-assed tourist, too, yeah. while I was doing it, you know, I was You like, were partying, you Yeah, were, I was, like, partying yeah. and, like, living it, so it was, like, it's this weird view of Vegas, like, the, that Vegas doesn't even exist. It right. literally doesn't, because they blew that building up, right. and I don't have that kind of, uh, you know, uh... Not celebrity, just like but, yeah, I don't have that kind of pull to right. do anything remotely near that. Um, but I guess later on, to make a long story short, I uh, later um, Tom Green, uh, I, I get his contact info on the way out, and he had a thing where he was doing a web show called okay. like Tom Green Web web of vision or something like that okay and then he had put out like a tweet like looking for people to write from a show oh. and i was like hey dude it's me like remember me man and i was like and i would love to write for your web show and i would like bust my ass for anything you need for your web show and then so he gets back to me he's like i need people to write interview questions and then like do these call-ins and and uh and then i need like you know character rather, call ins well just like thing? well just like call in and ask a question okay. but like one that's a good question that okay. we know like will be a good question right and so like he's gonna have the a guest on and you you write like 20 questions that we could use and you call in and the ones we okay. pick like you say one and then somebody else will say one and whatever and we'll Got do it. like three call ins via skype Got and it. uh the, but the call-ins will, will be, be planned the out. The will be kind of planned out so yeah. that it's not just like someone calling in and be like, suck a dick, suck a dick. <laughs> right. When he's right. got like... When you, you know, want good content. When he's got people on there. Right. right. Okay. So, dude, he puts on... The first one I do is... Uh, I'm going to... I I hope I don't screw up this guy. Garrett Morris, I think. He's the like our first original black cast member of uh, Saturday Night Live. Oh, wow. He's on the first time I'm on. I, oh. I'm on. Uh, Vern Troyer... I call oh, yeah. in. Okay. Uh, some of these are on AXS TV. Okay. Like, and so he was just super nice to me and letting me do this. Finally, one of them is Preston Lacey. Nice. Oh, I'm Jackass, sorry. Yeah. At the same time, I'm doing this shit for Tom Green before Preston. Yeah. Um, I worked for rock promoters because I did an open mic in a rock club. Okay. And they were like, oh, we booked Bam Margera. And I was like, oh, you booked Bam Margera? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, oh, I know Steve-O. Can I open for Bam? And they're like, oh, if you sell like 15 tickets, you know, fuck. Oh, so right. I'm like, all right, I'll sell these tickets and open for him. So yeah. I do. So okay. you're hustling those tickets. Yeah, so I hustle these tickets yes. and I open for him. Okay. Like, cool. He, I, I get two nights. I get one night in Cedar Rapids and one night in Waterloo. Okay. The first night, like, uh, they don't really give a fuck. I try to talk to the dude. He's like, huh, whatever. But I like the tour manager guy seems kind of standoffish, but they listen to me for a sec. The guy like talks to me for a second. Um, 
I, 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 I don't bother Bam like the first night, I think. I think I get a picture with him like the second night or something like that. Okay. Um, then uh, the next night we go up and uh, I do another pretty good show. So I'm like hosting for the opening bands before Bam and then bringing Bam up. It'd be like, Bam Margera's fuckface and stuff. But they're a band and it's all okay. bands. I'm the only comedian. Okay. The second time the guy, I'm like kind of doing, you know, I kind of do some off the cuff stuff. You know, some stuff that's kind of just like, I'm winging it, kind of. Mm-hmm. And the fucking tour manager, dude, I can see him just, like, dying laughing. Okay. He's like, hey, man, you were, you were fucking good. Like, uh, what the fuck, dude? And, uh, and he was like, yeah, shit. And so I was like, oh, I know Steve and whatever. And, and they were partying like crazy. Now, the tour manager guy is sober, but everybody else is coked up and drunk and crazy. Oh, yeah. There was an article written about the tour later, and the first line of it says, drugs, drugs, drugs. Sex, drama, chaos, and more drugs. If Bam Margera is not dead in a year, it's a miracle. Jesus. That's an article that was out about Fuckface Unstoppable around then, 2015. Okay. Uh, I can't remember the publication, but I could dig it up if you want to see it. It was fucking real. And these guys were nuts. They had a dude with them named Alex Flamstein, who was from Guttermouth. And he's oh, the yeah. craziest fucking Australian person in the world. And Alex drinks a bottle of Fireball a day and does so much fucking blow all these dudes did so much blow and so I, then I so this is like a totally different experience from like Tom Green or drank and like Steve is sober but like I mean they you know we would go to like the strip club and stuff I get on Bam's bus finally and he's got like coke out and mm-hmm. he's like, let's do some coke. Like, what fucking, you know, now I'm, like, seeing my childhood idol, and I'm, like, doing blow with him, uh-huh. you know? Oh, yeah. And then, uh, you know, like, so they're like, yeah, you want to do tomorrow night? And I'm like, it's in Joliet, Illinois. So I'm like, okay. And then, like, and the guy's like, ah, drive up tomorrow night. And then I host that one. And then, uh, you know, like, the, the next night, they're supposed to go out of state now. I can't remember where it was. I think it was Mishawaka, Indiana, and um, from Joliet, Illinois. And... In Joliet, I put it on the tour, dude. I'm like, yo, could I could I come along? He's like, Bam says it's cool. Bam's all coked out and shit like that. Right, like, of course he's hey, going to be like, oh, yeah. cool? He's like, fuck yeah, fucking yeah. get on the bus. Yeah. So I don't have like, and then then I it kind of sets into me again. Like I'm like, oh, fuck, I bet I'm going to shoot. I'm like, well, I got my car. I got to think. Like you guys aren't going to pay me for this and whatever. They're like, dude, you ain't going to pay you shit. But we'll get you coked up and drunk every day and you fucking whatever. And you, can, you can wear our merch. Mm-hmm. And they were so nice to me. They were the nicest people to me. And they took me and they just fucking like made me feel like a rock. They let me host the whole fucking thing. And they were a wreck. Oh, like yeah. they were coming apart, fighting with each other every day. Oh. And I got to tell you, all the drama they went through the entire fucking thing, never once did they fucking, on that run, did anybody turn on me and say a fucking word to me about like, fuck you or whatever the fuck. Right. Like, Nobody took they, any anger no, out on you. They just treated or... me like, it was like that movie, um, uh, what's that, uh, Oh, almost famous when all the kid, those famous kid comes along. Yeah. So this is like the first time I'm on a bus with a rock band and they're nuts. Yeah. And they're fucking like you know, like literally like stealing bottles coked and out breaking and, shit and like yeah. coked out and like fucking having threesomes with you know, people and shit just like it was crazy fucking, it was crazy shit. How old are you at this time? So this is right after that, so I'm like maybe twenty five now Fuck. or whatever. Right. Um I take a like a, a Craigslist post for a movie to shoot called The Burial that's a horror movie and they tell me I'm going to star in it and uh, and around that same time too I had a reality show that was wanted to shoot about my open mic so I actually surprisingly had a lot of shit going on um, but I just caught this week so anyways the BAM thing ends I drive back I the lesson of the BAM thing is towards the very end I make friends with the tour manager okay. and I say to the tour manager I'm like I'll stay sober with you the rest of the run whatever four more nights or whatever and help you with these guys mm-hmm. um, you know if I can learn from you and job shadow you and he's like fuck yeah just give me a fucking hand you know like what the fuck yeah. and then he these guys are ride, too much to he handle he needs a ride home so yeah. I like hold him hot. I drive us back from uh, uh, I get a car and drive us back from uh, West Virginia to Chicago. 
Okay. And uh, the whole time back, I just talk his head off. Uh-huh. And I'm just, just like, getting, as, getting much as much information as I can. As you I'm can. like, you're held hostage, motherfucker. Like, yeah. This guy tours with everybody. He's saying like he tours with Yellow Wolf and shit. I'm like, well, that, and he's like, oh, I toured for a living. I've toured since I was 18. I've never basically gone home since I was like 18. I'm like, lock the fuck <laughs> Yeah. Doors. You're like, like I am getting as much yeah, I'm, information I'm out of you as you. I can. Yeah. And so I just ear beat this dude the yeah. entire way back to Chicago. God bless him, dude. And um, he now, he teaches sometimes at colleges on how to tour and, like, do this sort of shit. So that's kind of how I, that's kind of how I approached your shit that one time we were at Seesaw. Mm-hmm. And I was like, hey, man, like, because I, I, I wanted to tour for comedy. Like, like I said, music and comedy are two totally different games to I'm me. I'm probably going to miss this show. I fucked this up. We are. It's that's all okay. good. Whatever. Um, so I, so I saw you, I was like... I think the first time I saw you was at Seesaw or one of the mics or something. What's your What's your address? Um, well, let's. Uh, <laughs> shit, we don't want to say that on the. Yeah, thing, let's right? not say that. You, um, you see what I'm doing? Right? Yeah, Push yeah. You owe people money. Yeah, I owe I owe a lot of people money. So let's just. Um, how do I go to the? Then you go okay. Right, okay. Right. All right. Yeah, so I I kind of like approached you and I was like, give me some tips, you know? Like, yeah. the remember when calculation is complete? Remember when you told me that uh, the thing you used to do where you'd like make flyers and then you'd ship them out yeah, to like well, I random stole, cities? I stole that technique from uh, I stole that technique from Jer Dog. His name is Jeremy Danley. He's like the ultimate. He calls himself the Bar Comic. Okay, he's from Iowa. He's the okay. ultimate ultimate road dude. Yeah, see, respect, that's what I want to do. Respect out there to Jer Dog. Uh, but yeah, it's your dog. I stole that technique from him. He calls that comic books and he nice. sends out mailers to different bars yeah. and I've employed that tactic at different places. I pretty much want to do the Pat Garrity. I don't, I don't do that as never later. ending so tour I, thing. The Pat Garrity. That's yeah. Kind of how I, I love it. What I get to be on. So it, anyways, I meet this. I'll wrap this all up here real quick. So I, okay. I finally, I, Tom Green, right? Yeah. I have met the tour manager, dude. I know him. Yes. Right? So I've now, out, out on the road now you're talking to now him whatever. instead of talking now to Steve. Now Preston Steve-O. Lacey appears on Tom Green. Okay. And I'm the one writing the questions and whatever. Oh. So I said like, I said to Tom because I have Tom's contact info. Yeah. I said like, yo, I sent you this shit for today. Also, say what up to Preston Lacey because I know Bam, his brother. You know now. Yeah, I know Steve-O. Uh, I know CKY, yeah. some of CKY, and like yeah. Steve-O. So just you know, say what up for me. And then he's like, oh, cool. And then Tom Green goes, do you know all the Jackass guys? And I was like, no. And he's like, oh, then I'll, I'll definitely introduce you to Preston. They're all cool. And so he sends Preston an email that's like links us up over email okay. because he was like, well, do you think you could get him some? Some money, you think you can make him some money? I think is what Tom Green, you know, he's like, yeah, nice. make, you know, he probably want you to make him some money. And I said, like, okay, and he was like, okay. And so, because one of the things they talked about was Preston doing stand up, that was it. Okay, so Preston's like, yeah, I'm trying to do stand up comedy now. So um, you're his in, and, and then so I'm like, well, have you ever done it? And he's like, ah, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, yeah. okay, well, what do you want for that? And he's like, eh, you know, and he says like a low ass number, and so I'm like, okay, uh, yeah. fuck, I'll even put that on my neck. And let me see if I can sell some of these. Yeah. And then he's like, yeah, I live in Missouri. And I was like, okay, well, I live in Iowa. Uh, I sold 12 shows in, like, less than 24 hours. Damn. At, uh, at full price. And uh, he came out to Iowa, and we did a run, and we hit it off, and we were buddies. And then uh, later on, I contact that tour manager, mm-hmm. and I tell him, hey, guess who I've got? Yeah. I've got Preston Lacey now. And then he's like, oh, shit, I love Jackass. Uh, I'll do it. I'll sell your tour. And so he sells us 40 shows, and we go all over the fucking country together. Jesus. And then uh, later on, I have a, uh, I end up building up, so I have all the Jackass dudes. I do a big tour in Canada with them. And suffice to say, we have a falling out. Um, but uh, 40 different nights that the tour manager gave me of contact informations now all across the country and i've been so you through, got your little and black I've been book through now one, yeah and i've been through once 